إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله عز وجل وخير الهدي هدي نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أبو هريرة May Allah be pleased with him narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said the five prayers and the Jumu'ah from one week to the other and Ramadan to the following Ramadan are an expiation kafara so long as you do not commit major sins ibadallah in this beautiful authentic hadith our prophet alayhi salatu wasalam divides sins into two types major and minor and this is mentioned in the quran as well where allah azza wa jal says if you avoid the major sins which you are forbidden we will remove from you your lesser sins and admit you to a noble entrance and that is into Jannah may Allah make me and you of the people of Jannah and a major sin is defined as follows what is a major sin it is every sin that Allah Azza wa Jal threatened those who commit it with torment or fire or a prescribed punishment in dunya or by cursing that individual and exit him out of Allah's mercy and so many of the Muslims believe that these major sins are seven Ibn Abbas may Allah be pleased with him and with his father was asked are the major sins seven he said, they are closer to be 70 than seven. And Allah Azza wa Jal knew that we are weak and vulnerable. So he guided us and directed us to what erases and forgives such sins. So Allah ordered us to repent and to seek his forgiveness as Allah says in the Quran and seek your Lord's forgiveness and turn to him in repentance he will grant you a good provision for an appointed term but what is the difference between istighfar and tawbah what's the difference between seeking forgiveness and repentance istighfar is dua is asking Allah Azza wa Jal to forgive your sins and to remove 
any consequences in this life or in the hereafter. So it's dua. You ask Allah to forgive you. While repentance is to quit the sin and to intend not to do it and to have deep remorse in your heart that you have committed such a sin at the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal. And it has to be known to all of us as humans, Allah created us prone to fall into sin and to make errors and to forget. And because Allah, His name is at Tawwab, Al Rahim, Al Ghaffar, Al Ghafoor, because these beautiful names of Allah relating to the one who guides to repentance and accept it the one who forgives the, the, the sins and the one who is most merciful because all of that Allah opened for us a door where we can enter from and seek his forgiveness first of all minor sins they are sins but when we avoid major sins, Allah with His kindness and mercy erases these minor sins. And when we do good deeds, Allah erases minor sins. And the proof for that, this hadith we have. As salatu lis salat, prayer to prayer, Jumu'ah to Jumu'ah, Ramadan to Ramadan, Umrah to Umrah. All of these erase and forgive and expiate our minor sins. And the most important of all of these deeds is a salat. Because this is what Allah Azza wa Jal mainly erases minor sins with. The Prophet says alayhi salatu wasalam to his companions, shall I tell you something by means of which Allah erases sins and raises people in status? The companion said, yes, O Prophet of Allah, tell us, inform us. So the Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, doing wudu properly. And this wudu is to be done at times of hardship. When it's too hot and the, wa the water is too warm, you do it properly. When it's too cold and freezing, yet you do the wudu properly, this will erase your sins. The Prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam, doing wudu properly at times when it is difficult to do so. Number two, taking many steps to the masjid. The more you walk to the masjid, the more sins are erased and the more of your status is raised and waiting for prayer after prayer. That is constant readiness. So the Prophet also told us whoever makes a perfect wudu and then prays only two rak'ahs, only, but he does not speak to himself about worldly matters. He does not have whispers, he does not stray away from salat he concentrates fully only for these two rak'ahs allah azza wa jal will forgive his sins now allah azza wa jal knows that we are weak that we will make sins every single day because this is how we were created yet allah told us what erases these sins Allah encouraged us to repent. He's calling us come and repent regardless of your sin. Never ever think of a sin that it is too great for Allah's mercy. No matter what heinous sin you had committed, Allah forgives it if you come and seek his forgiveness and repent to him. No matter what sin, even if you dug ditches in the ground, 
filled it with fire and threw the Muslims and the believers in it to torture them. Even if you do such a heinous massacre and you repent, Allah forgives you. Allah says in the Quran, those who persecute the believing men and women, torture them by burning them alive, and then do not repent, meaning if they were to repent, Allah would accept them, and then do not repent, will certainly suffer the punishment of hell and the torment of burning. Not only that, Allah has given repentance and forgiveness for those who commit the most heinous sins in Islam. Those who associate others with Allah, shirk. Those who kill innocent people. Those who commit zina and fornicate and who shall ever do this will be severely tormented and humiliated on the day of judgment. And this is for eternity. But then Allah says, except for those who repent, believe, and do righteous work for them, Allah will replace their evil deeds with good deeds. And ever is Allah forgiving and merciful. So anyone who commits such heinous sins, not only Allah will forgive him, Allah will replace his sins with good deeds. Subhanallah, how is this possible? Some scholars say, Allah will change his shirk into tawheed. His killing innocent people into safety and security. His fornication into chastity and righteousness. Other scholars said, no, he committed one million sins. Allah will forgive him and repent to him if he comes in repentance and change it into one million good deeds and hasanat. And this is Allah's forgiveness and this is Allah's kindness and mercy. If you have this sincere repentance and offer good deeds, this is light upon light. I say what you hear and I seek Allah's forgiveness for me and for you. So ask him for forgiveness. Wallahu ghafoorun rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد إمام ابن القيم رحمه الله says those who are sinful Allah عز وجل placed for them in this دنيا three huge rivers where they can erase and expiate their sins. River number one, sincere repentance. When you sincerely repent, Allah forgives your sins. River number two, good deeds that would overwhelm your sins. So you commit one sin, commit another good deed, Allah will multiply one to 10 and 10 to 700, it would overwhelm your sin and Allah would forgive it. The third river is the river of calamities, tests and hardship. And this river, you have nothing to do with it. You're sitting in your home, a calamity and a hardship befalls upon you. Stress, depression, confusion, an accident, poverty, illness, something you have nothing to do with it, Allah, when you're patient, erases your sins accordingly. What happens if I were to die and my sins are still there? These three huge rivers were not sufficient. Ibn al-Qayyim says, in this case, there is one last river in hellfire. 
that you have to be admitted to be cleansed and washed off your sins before being admitted to Jannah. May Allah protect us and keep us away from such rivers. Now, the river of hardship and calamities, no one can be saved from it. Not even the messengers and the prophets of Allah Azza wa Jal. On the contrary, the more tests you get, the more closer you, Allah, you are to Allah Azza wa Jal. The Prophet said alayhi salatu wa sallam, Inna Allah idha habba qawman ibtalahum. Allah, when he loves people, what does he do? He tests them with calamities, with hardship. This purifies them and raises their status. And whenever you go through such hardship, remember your beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was the most tested of Allah's creation. You look at what the idol worshippers did to him. They accused him of sorcery, of being insane, of being a liar, of being a poet, of being a soothsayer. They even slandered him and accused his beloved, pure, innocent wife of adultery. They attacked him physically. They abused him verbally. And they did anything they could do to harm him, alayhi salatu wasalam. And he is Allah's most beloved human being. So what about you and me? Indeed, when we are tested, we are not even close to the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. So whenever you get such hardship, whenever you get, get calamities, remember that these are from our own sins. And Allah is erasing them by such hardship and calamity. The Prophet says alayhi salatu wasalam, no stress or exhaustion befalls upon a Muslim nor worry or distress, even a thorn which pricks him. But Allah will expiate for his sins because of that. So poverty, illness are all part of Allah's great hardship and calamities that Muslims have no other way out but to be patient and tolerant and content. And the worst of all hardship and calamities are those that afflict us in our religion. If we fall sick, tomorrow we will become better. If we fall poor, tomorrow we will become rich. But if we lose our religion, if we are tested with calamities in our own chastity in our own religious practice if we become addicted to pornography or to lying or to cheating or dealing in riba or financing in more our houses and mortgages in haram this is a calamity and hardship in our religion how can we ever recover from this how many righteous practicing women were tested with a hardship and a calamity when their, her father got her married to a corrupt husband, a sinful husband who orders her to take the hijab and to free mix and to do haram things in her house. How many righteous practicing young men who are being harassed and abused by their own relatives and friends just because they grew a beard and started to practice Islam and follow the sunnah. Therefore, our religion is a beautiful religion. Whenever you fall weak, whenever you fall into sin, whenever you disobey Allah the Almighty, immediately after a sin, do good deeds. Give charity. Go and be dutiful to your parents. Connect to your next of kin. And above all, pray on time in the masjid as Allah ordered you. Because all of this will help you get rid of these sins. Allah says, and establish prayer at the two ends of the day and at the approach of the night. Indeed, 
Good deeds do away with misdeeds. So if the prayer is being called for, the iqama is being called, and the Muslims are praying on time in the masjid, and you're not with them, how do you want Allah to forgive your sins? If you're not complying with this little task that Allah is ordering you to do, and you prefer to watch a football match, or a movie, or to sit with the children, and skip the salat with the congregation, how do you expect Allah Azza wa Jal to forgive your sins? It is sufficient for us Muslims in the midst of this ocean, this ocean of sins and tribulations and fitan, it is sufficient for us to sincerely have our deeds for Allah and follow the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. If we do this, Allah will forgive our sins. And after all of this, there is always the huge, immense mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. It is He who completes what's missing. It is He who accepts repentance and forgives sins and opens the gates of repentance to those coming back to their Lord. Those anxious and eager to enter into His mercy. So never ever despair of Allah's mercy and never ever be heedless from repenting and asking Allah for forgiveness and offering good deeds. Allahumma ghfir lana warhamna wa'afina wa'fu anna wa tawallana bi ri'ayatika wa la tahrimna rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar rabbana ghfir dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa tawaffana muslimin wa hshurna ma'a al-salihin Allahumma aminna fi awtanina wa durina wa aslih a'immatana wa wulata umurina واجعل ولايتنا في من خافك واتقاك واتبع رضاك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم انصر إخواننا المجاهدين في فلسطين اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين في غزة اللهم كن لهم ومعهم وعليك بأعدوك وعدوهم اللهم إنا ندرأ بك في نحورهم ونعوذ بك ربنا من شرورهم وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استوي سقيم يرحمكم الله أقيم صفوفكم وعتادلوا Lurus darah para perkan sof. Allah Akbar. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين
قل تعالوا أتل ما حرم ربكم عليكم ألا تشركوا به شيئا وبالوالدين إحسانا ولا تقتلوا أولادكم من إملاق نحن نرزقكم وإياهم ولا تقربوا الفواحش ما ظهر منها وما بطن ولا تقتلوا النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق ذلكم وصاكم به لعلكم تعقلون ولا تقربوا مال اليتيم إلا بالتي هي أحسن إلا بالتي هي أحسن حتى يبلغ شدا وأوفوا الكيل والميزان بالقسط لا نكلف نفسا إلا وسعها وإذا قلتم فعدلوا ولو كان ذا قربا وبعهد الله أوفوا ذلكم وصاكم به لعلكم تذكروا ذلكم ذلكم وصاكم به لعلكم تذكرون الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قل يا أيها الكافرون لا أعبد ما تعبدون ولا أنتم عابدون ما أعبد ولا أنا عابد ما عبدتم ولا أنتم عابدون ما أعبد لكم دينكم ولي دين الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر
الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله صف الله صف صف الله صف الله صف الله صف الله الله أكبر